Hi guys, welcome back to Manic Mama Musings. And today is True Crime Tuesday. I can't find my glasses. So let's hope that I can read my writing okay. And if not, I'll have to start this video all over and search. But I really don't feel like searching right now. So, you like my shirt? My friend Lisa got it for me. She got me a little bit small. I've gained weight thanks to the lockdown and all. So today, um, I thought I'd start out like um, focusing on crimes in New Mexico, as in Kathy Lawson last week disappearing. That was not one that's ever been, you know, on documented on videos and stuff. But this one, I watched some videos, I looked it up. This one happened in Elephant Butte, New Mexico, which is near Truth or Consequences. I've never been to Elephant Butte that I can remember. But, um, so it's here, it happened here in New Mexico and it was the Toy Box Killer. I had never heard of him. And I thought I knew serial killers. But there's probably a reason why I didn't. His real name was David Parker Ray. So, uh, I wrote everything down because I did a lot of research. So, forgive me for reading. He was a kidnapper, torturer, rapist, and suspected serial killer. Though no bodies were found, he was accused by his accomplices of killing several people and suspected by the police to have murdered as many as 60 women from Arizona and New Mexico while living in Elephant Butte, New Mexico. I'm going to put some links in the description box if you want to watch some documentaries on him because I looked some up and so that way you can, if you're like me, I know Denise Hoffman said she loves true crime, so, but I'm going to tell you that some of it's just, it made my stomach turn, but yeah, it was pretty nasty. Uh, he soundproofed a truck trailer that he called his toy box and equipped it with items used for sexual torture. Ray was convicted of kidnapping and torture in 2001 for which he received a, lo a lengthy sentence, but he was never convicted of murder. He died of a heart attack about one year after his conviction. I wish people like that would live and be tortured, but, you know. At least he can't hurt anybody else, right? During his childhood, Ray and his younger sister, Peggy, lived with their grandfather. He was sp sporadically visited by his violent alcoholic father who would supply him with magazines depicting sadomasochistic pornograph pornography. At school he was bullied by his peers because he was shy around girls. What father does that? Like I know that those parents exist but that's his sexual Fantasies of raping, torturing, and even murdering women developed during his teenage years. Around this time, his sister discovered his sadomasochistic drawings as well as pornographic photos of bondage acts. Ray was married four times and had two children including his accomplice daughter, Jessie Ray. Ray sexually tortured and per presumably killed his victims using whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, leg spreader bars, surgical blades, and saws. It is thought that he ter terrorized many women with these tools for many years. While living in New Mexico with the help of accomplices, some of whom are alleged to have been several of the women he was dating. That's like against all kinds of girl code, ain't it? Inside the torture, 
room along with numerous sex toys, torturing implements, syringes, and detailed diagrams showing ways of inflicting pain, there was a homemade electrical generator which was used for torture. That's awful. Ray also put his victims in wooden con contraptions that bent them over and this is horrible and immobilized them while he had his dogs and sometimes friends rape them. He often had an audio tape recording of his voice played for his played for his victims whenever they regained consciousness. Um, and, uh, what, um, some of the documentaries, um, play that recording. It's awful to think that those people listen to it over and over. What led to his arrest, Ray, what led to his arrest, Ray posed as an undercover police officer and approached Cynthia V. Hill in a parking lot. He told her she was under arrest for solicitation of prostitution and handcuffed her. He put her in his trailer and took her to Elephant Butte. I'm not sure what undercover cop would be driving a tractor trailer, but okay. He was a mechanic, by the way. Um, so what he was even doing with that truck, and no one wondered. I have no idea. After three days of captivity, V. Hill escaped from his trailer on March 22, 1999. She escaped when Ray went to work and she stabbed his accomplice, Cindy Hendy, to get free. She fled while wearing an iron slave collar and padlock chains. She ran down the road seeking help, which she got from a nearly got from a nearby home owner who took her in, comfort her, comforted her, and called the police. Her escape led officials to the trailer and, instig and instigated the capture of Ray and his accomplice. After, or accomplices, I should say. After the publicity surrounding the arrest, another victim, Angelica Montano, came forward. She told a similar story and said she had reported the incident to police, but there had been no follow-up. The pre To prevent women from reporting the crimes, Ray had drugged them with agents to induce amnesia. He used propofol and... I can't remember what the other one is, but the documentaries do tell that. The, the propofol and something else. And then um, the the first, the, uh, the girl that came forward after seeing the publicity... Um, the daughter actually, um, she had gone out with the daughter, or got, well, she had ended up at a bar with the daughter. I don't know the exact, like if she went out with her or they just ended up at the bar, but it led to, she was, the daughter was supposed to drive her home. I guess she was too intoxicated or something. I don't know, but the daughter was supposed to drive her home and instead of the daughter took her to the toy box and to her dad. And they drugged her and whatnot. And she didn't have a recollection of it. And she knew that something wasn't right. But she didn't remember. She kept having nightmares. And then when she saw the it on the news and stuff. It started coming back to her. Some of the stuff that was done to her. And she realized. Yeah. And so then they. Like she little by little started regaining her memory. And um. He wasn't never, he was never convicted of murder because they couldn't find any bodies. And it was just the accomplice's word, but there was no proof there was murder because they found no bodies. And um, if you've never been to New Mexico, there's parts that are nothing but desert. Like just wide open spaces that are desert. So imagine, and especially in that area, like who knows where he could have buried bodies or left them to be eaten by coyotes and birds and whatnot and so yeah that's why he was never convicted of murder but he was suspected of 60 murders um and then uh who knows how many people how many women 
that didn't die that don't remember what happened to them but have that trauma in their subconscious and how awful if you do watch the documentaries like can it's just something that I can't imagine ever having to go on living with it it's horrible they show some of his torture stuff and they show the toy box in the doc documentary okay documentary I never knew that New Mexico had a serial I'm sure we've had a few but I didn't know about the toy box killer I had never heard of him and so I assumed that I didn't hear of him because it was never proven he was he murdered anyone. But they've got him down as a serial killer, a, a believed serial killer. And so, yeah, I enjoyed learning about that. I mean, not enjoyed. I found it um, interesting uh, and whatnot. And so, yeah, um, I don't know what next week's will be. Stay tuned and find out. I love you guys. Um... We drew for the new show. I will be watching it by myself. It's not LJ's cup of tea, but it's it, it'll be after this when we drew. Um, but we did watch an episode, and I like it, so I'll be watching it. It's okay because it gives me something to watch while he's at work. So I think we're going to have a movie night. You guys enjoy your night. Enjoy my t-shirt. I love it. I just got to find a way to stretch it because, you know, covid did it to me. I'm going to blame it on something other than myself because who does, who wants to blame it on themselves? No one. So anyway, I love y'all. Have a good night and I hope you watch the documentaries. Hi guys. So we're going to do the drawing, um, for the, to see what we watch next. Um, because we're about to start watching something. I got to finish up a fingerless glove. And then I'm going to do. Uh, record the. True crime. A video. But okay. So we have Salem. Rebecca, Rebecca Lamas. Um, Fibergé Crochet. This is Bridgerton. Denise Hoffman. I'm kind of showing them fast aren't I. Um, when they see us, Darla Antonio. That's the one I couldn't remember the other night that I was trying to remember what else she recommended. The Crown, Kelly Ogden. KO Crafts with Kelly. Or by Kelly. Um, Supernatural, Rebecca. Again. And the first 48. And that's Rebecca. So the first 48 has a lot of seasons on the. I think it's. I found it on Netflix. I found it somewhere. So that one will take us a while. But that's okay. I'm mixing them up. Okay, now. There's two of them stuck together. They didn't want to let go of each other. Bridgerton. Denise Hoffman. So that's what we will watch next. I already owe Denise some happy mail. <laughs> so there you go. I'll be recording soon for my true crime. Thanks guys.